のウィッシュもう一度永遠の先へ」Kamigami no Asobi is a 12 episode anime released in spring of 2014. The show is directed by Tomoyuki Kawamura, famous for approximately nothing, and written by Tomoko Kamparu, who has worked on a ton of shoujo. For example, she's worked on shows such as Kimi ni Todoke. More relevantly, though, she's worked on Utano Prince Summer. Most importantly, she worked on the anime adaptation of Nana. The show is produced by Brainsbase, who have done an incredible amount of fantastic shows such as Natsumi Yu Jinshao and Dorarara. But sadly, t h e Their repertoire of reverse harems extends to Amnesia, a horrible yet morbidly entertaining show about a girl who continually gets herself killed or locked in cages. While I wanted to have high hopes for Kamigami no Asabi, I really didn't because of the studio behind it. But being a fan of reverse harems, I just had to see what this show had to offer. So, the story follows that of Yui Kusanagi, a high school student who is one day transported to a magical world. In that world, she meets a huge cast of the shonen before discovering that the world that she's in was created by the Greek god Zeus. And Zeus requires her help to make many of the gods living in his garden understand the human heart. The first episode of this show was written off by practically everybody who was watching it, and I can kind of understand. Why? First, we get this incredibly drawn out scene of one of the main characters doing a transformation sequence that isn't entirely dissimilar to a magical girl. And all the characters were introduced through CGI flower blossoming and choruses of harps. And because it's a reverse harem, the story was pretty much instantly written off as well because. Reverse harems aren't exactly notorious for their intense storylines. So, from the surface, this show really only has its characters to sell it, and they had better be damned good. So, the characters from this show are actually kind of interesting. The various boys in this harem actually take on the roles of different gods from different mythologies from all over the world. So, we have a cast of characters that come from Greek, Norse, Japanese, and Egyptian mythology. Just like you give 10 out of 10. Do be warned, though, seeing as there are a ton of different cultures incorporated into this show, while I talk about the characters, I'm probably going To mispronounce a lot of them, but that's okay because the show took liberties with its pronunciation too. Adessa, Dionysus, Baldor Fringo Horni. So, the first set of characters we're going to talk about are those from Japanese mythology. Sukito and Takaru Totsuka are two brothers with very different personalities. Sukito is the Japanese god of the moon. He's a very quirky yet distant character. He's an excellent note taker but has very little capacity of understanding for anything, pretty much. Though, if you give him a mission, he's very dedicated in seeing it through until the end. His brother, Takeru, the god of the sea, is actually quite the opposite. He's a very loud and brash character and comes across as incredibly hard to handle. And almost instantly, he was on the bottom of my favourite character list when this show began, but more on that later. Anyway, if we move on, we can talk about the gods from Greek mythology, which honestly was where most of my interest lay. So, the three gods from Greek mythology are Dionysus, Hades, and Apollon. We'll quickly brush over Dionysus as he's a very minor character, which is actually kind of a shame because he's the god of wine and merrymaking, so he's easily the best god. He doesn't add a whole lot to the series, but he doesn't take anything away either, and he's quite likeable from what we do get to see of him. But we'll move on to talk about his uncle Hades, the god of the Underworld. Hades is the token gloomy character of the series, but he's kind of special. While he could just be the miserable character with incredible amounts of misfortune, he's so much more than that. The thing is, they used his character really well with the dynamics of the rest of the group, and he ended up being really funny at a ton of different points because of the humour that was around him. And lastly, we have Apollon, the Prince Charming of the show, if you will. For the most part of this show, he actually seemed to be the main focus and Main route that they were going down, and I can kind of see why. He's kind, he's sweet, and he's incredibly optimistic. He ended up being a personal favourite of mine just for the fact that he had this incredibly optimistic and energetic personality. And lastly, we'll move on to the Norse gods. Naturally, you have Thor, although his character is very much a supporting role. And he is just basically there to look over his friends, Balder and Loki. So, Loki is the mischievous character of the bunch. He loves pulling pranks and very, very rarely takes anything seriously. And the only time he does is when his character is developing, which cannot happen without his best friend, Balder. Balder is quite possibly the most interesting character out of the entire set. Because you remember how I mentioned before that reverse harms are sort of written off as for Joshi fuel and not really having a ton of story behind them? 
Well, Boulder and Loki sort of propel the story forward and have a very interesting and gripping story towards the end of the show. But even without that, Boulder is seen as this incredibly adorable klutz who you just can't help but like. And the reason that I say this is because he was the first character to show any kindness towards Yui whatsoever. And speaking of Yui, our heroine, I have to say that she's probably one of the best reverse harem heroines I've seen in a very long time. She is put in this situation where she is trapped in this world that Zeus has created and there is nothing she can do about that. While in some shows like Diabolic Lovers and Amnesia, the solution is just to run away. Yui can't do that. So instead of feeling miserable about the fact that she is stuck in this place for an entire year, she just does what she has to do to help these gods and try and get out of the garden. She doesn't mope about and she doesn't agonise about everything she has to do and it's really, really incredible to see. So the way that the show is structured is very similar to a few other reverse harems that I've seen before. Since the cast of characters is quite large, they're each given an episode to have their own development and have their own story. So one episode will be learning about Hades' personality and then the next will be learning about Takaru's backstory. And this worked in the show's favour so much, I can't even tell you. The reason that I really like this formula is because, like that, it could change my opinion of a character. So I mentioned earlier that I really didn't like Takeru. So the reason that I didn't like his character was because I was given a first impression of him that showed him as being a brash, rude character. I just didn't like that, but when we got to his episode and he got backstory and his own development, he was third on my list of characters. Because when we got to his episode, my opinion of him absolutely, completely, 100% changed and it did that with a lot of characters. Honestly, by the end of the series it was really hard for me to choose which characters I liked the most because they were all so well developed with the time that they were given, but it is really easy to see that Apollon, Loki and Balder are the ones that have the main focus of this series. Like I mentioned before, the story between Loki and Balder is the most compelling of the show. And that is what I like about Kamigami no Asabi. It could have told the story like many other anime do, of friends being in a situation that they don't want to be in and banding together to fix it. It had those elements, but it didn't just have those elements. I would love to talk about this story and this plot that the show had, however, I'm not going to because even going anywhere near that seems to be a spoiler for the show, so if you have seen it, you know full well what I'm talking about, and if you are interested, go watch the show. But let's move on to talk about the design and animation of this thing. With a cast this large, you really need to make sure that your characters are quite diverse, and they really were. Most of their designs are really eye-pleasing, my least favourite being Loki, because it was just too flamboyant for me, I think. And the only real similarities were between Apollon and Boulder, because they both have blonde hair. So they definitely achieved making the cast a diverse cast. And the design of this thing was so good, and even if we're not talking about characters, the sets of this thing were amazing, the outfits of this thing were amazing, just the whole world was incredible to look at, as well as, as well as the characters being eye candy, I will give you that. But it's just a shame that this art style, this beautiful amazing art style has barely crossed over into the merchandising. Seriously, who thought that this was a good idea instead of this? The animation was okay. When it needed to look good, it looked good, but sometimes it had moments of awful inconsistency. I know that studios have time constraints, but who looked at this and thought, yeah, that's good, send it out. I cannot stress enough that I hope that these inconsistencies are fixed in later Blu-ray releases because they look awful. And now, let's talk about the music of this thing. Good God, was I impressed with the soundtrack! I am honestly one of those people that doesn't really pay attention to background music unless it really stands out to me, and the music in this thing really stuck out to me. And honestly, I loved the crap out of this OST. It never fell out of place and it had enough variety to fit in with every situation and was just so good. Though, I will say, unfortunately, at the time of this video going out, the anime soundtrack hasn't been released yet, so any background music that you might be hearing is from the game and not the show. I really, really wish I could say the same for the OP and ED. They're just not very good. I stand by the idea that just because you're a voice actor, it doesn't give you the innate ability to sing. However, no one cared in this situation. <laughs> 
That being said though, the songs sure did grow on me. I know they're not quote unquote good songs, but I guess at least I could enjoy them by the end of the show. So my overall thoughts on Kamigami no Asa V are genuinely quite positive. While it did have its weaker episodes, it does feel like it's one of the best reverse harems to come out in recent time. I honestly love this show, I can't wait for the OVA, and if you have any inkling on wanting to check this thing out, you can do so over on Crunchyroll. And I highly recommend it if you are a fan of Reverse Harems. Mentioning Reverse Harems, sometime in the future I will be doing a video about my maybe top 5 or top 10 Reverse Harems, but I haven't seen them all yet, so if you have a Reverse Harem that you would like me to definitely watch, leave it in the comments below. As well as if you've seen Kamigami no Asobi, let me know what you thought down below as well. But that's everything I really need to talk about with this show, so thank you for watching, take care, and I will see you guys soon.